in this series of trigonometric ratios, coordinates and angles, we'll take a few examples where we'll consider a point on our coordinate plane and then find out all the trigonometric ratios and the principal angle. Okay? And I'll also give you a general solution for each kind of question so that you can solve your test problem without any problems. Okay? But two, the coordinates of a point on the terminal arm are shown. Determine the exact trigonometric ratios and the angle. Well, angle has not been specified to which accuracy, so you can use one decimal place for the time being. Normally, it will be specified. Okay. Now, the point Q is given to us, and this happens to be in quadrant 3. So, let's write down all our quadrant numbers. So, this is quadrant 1, this is quadrant 2, that is quadrant 3, and this is quadrant 4. Let's analyze the situation. So, we know it is in quadrant 3. Okay? That's the first thing. Now, second thing which we want to know is the cost rule. Which trigonometric ratio is positive where? We know this is C, A. S and T. So as per the cost rule, tangent is positive here and all others are negative. Remember that. Okay. Now third thing which we need to figure out is we know X and Y point. So if we know X and Y point, what is the radius of this arm? Right. So that is kind of very critical. So let's find out the radius of this arm. Right. So radius will be think like this. Let's make a triangle now. Always make your triangle with the horizontal x-axis. Always. That is kind of a rule for you, right? So make this triangle. So we'll drop a perpendicular from Q to the x-axis, right? And remember, we are talking about the principal angle. Principal angle is measured with positive x-axis to the terminal arm. So the principal angle is this for us, and that is theta. So that is the angle we are interested in finding. Remember that, right? Now, how do we find this angle? We actually find this angle by first finding acute angle, the related acute angle. That is this angle. And let this angle be alpha, related acute angle. Imagine like this, that you have a triangle very similar in this quadrant. Think like this. This is your similar triangle. Is it okay? And you're trying to find this angle alpha. Think always like this. Now, when you're considering this angle, you know, all your values will be positive, right? That helps. So forget about those negative values while calculating the angle alpha, right? Think about this similar triangle. A point minus 6 minus 3 could be considered here as 6, 3, correct? Think about this point and that triangle and calculate your related acute angle alpha. It should be between 0 and 90. And so two things to start with. One, we need to find the radius of the arm. Second, we need to find related acute angle. So let's start one by one. So let's find the radius, right? Or the hypotenuse, right? So let's say radius. Which is the hypotenuse of our triangle, right? So for that, we will use Pythagorean theorem. This is a right angle triangle, correct? So we know x square plus y square is equal to r square, right? Same case here, right? x square plus y square equals to r square. So we'll write down r is equals to square root of x square plus y square. And the coordinates given to us are 6 and 3, right? We'll square them, right? So we'll have them 6 square plus 3 square, correct? 6 square is 36 and 3 square is 9. So that gives us 45. So 45 is 6 plus 36. So we get 45. And square root of 45, 45 can be taken as 9 times 5, right? And square root of 9 is 3. So you could simplify this and write 3 square root 5. It's kind of an important job to do, right? That is the better way of writing square root of 45, right? So now we know R. Got it. So let's, let's draw a line here. We'll find all trigonometric ratios first. Since we know R, we know X and Y. Now trigonometric ratios, let's figure them out. 
So let's start with sine. Now you should remember Sokatoa. Let me write down Sokatoa here for, for you. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cos is adjacent over hypotenuse and tan is opposite over adjacent. Okay? So this is how we are going to find each and every trigonometric ratio. Now sine theta. Theta, remember we are doing theta. Theta is this angle, the principal angle theta. Now forget about acute angle, right? Theta. So we have sine theta. Sine theta you should expect negative. Only value which you are getting positive of primary trigonometric ratio is tan. Correct. Now, now look at that is a kind of a check on you. So sine theta is always y over r. Is it okay? Now here y value is minus 3. It makes sense. It's minus 3 is opposite to your angle theta. Consider that triangle, right? Think like this. Opposite to this angle will be minus 6. Do you see that minus 6? minus 6. So it is minus 6 over r which is 3 square root 5. 3 square root 5, right? Now this could be simplified. See the beauty of uh, simplifying this? Square root 45 writing as 3 square root 5. It helps. It helps. So you get minus and 6 goes 2 times. So it is 2 over square root of 5. Correct? So that is how you find sine theta. It is negative. It should be negative in coordinate 3. So that's the correct answer. Now let's find cos theta. Cos theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent is always the x value. Do you see it is along the x axis but negative this time because on the left side of origin, right? Which is negative 6. Oh, I used the wrong value for sine theta. I'm sorry for that. Sine was y value, y is minus 3. So let me correct this. So this is minus 3 and not, not 6. And so this we get 1 over square root 5. Okay, good, I checked it. Now cos theta. Cos theta is the adjacent value. That means the x value of minus 6, right? So we'll write x over r, which is minus 6 over 3 square root 5. 3 square root 5. And this goes two times. Yes, it does. And we get 2 over square root 5. And that is the value of cosine theta. Now let's find out tan theta. Now tan theta for us is opposite over adjacent. Opposite side is minus 3, right? So it is, let me write first, y over x. Opposite over adjacent. That's y and this is x. So y value is minus 3. So we get minus 3 over x, which is minus 6. And so we get half. So that is the value of tan theta half. Sine theta reciprocal is cosecant theta, right? So cosecant theta. And that is reciprocal means reverse of this. So it is just minus 5. The sine will remain minus, right? And for cos, it is secant theta. Secant theta is reciprocal of cos. Square root 5 over 2 with a negative sign. No, I didn't write square root. So I do these mistakes. Good, I'm finding them here. Now, tan theta is cotangent theta, and that is the reciprocal of tan. So you get 2. You see that? So these are your secondary trigonometric ratios. These are primary trigonometric ratios. In all, we have six of them, right? So you got all our values. The check here is we are in quadrant 3, right? So quadrant 3. So I'll write quadrant 3 here. And in quadrant 3, only value positive should be 10. And it's reciprocal, cotangent, perfect. And others are negative. That's good. So that's kind of a check. It always helps people like me to get the right answer, right? Now, one thing remains. And that is to find the principal angle. How to find that angle theta? Now, we do it in two steps. First step is find related acute angle. First step is find related acute angle. So we always find related acute angle using tan and imagine that these points are without those signs and they are, they are in quadrant 1. So we say well tan theta is half so theta equals to that means 6 over 3. So we say alpha related acute. First we find related acute angle. So alpha equals to tan inverse of y over this so which is half right 3 over 6 you could find or 1 over 2 right so let me write 3 over 6 
no harm, right? Sometimes we do calculation mistakes, so let's be safe. So we do tan inverse, the so second function, tan inverse, and 3 divided by 6, bracket close, equals to 26.565. Now, depending on what accuracy is required, we can always round it, right? Let me just time round it to whole numbers, okay? Let us write down this as equals to 27 degrees. But you have to do rounding as mentioned in the question, okay? So that is the angle alpha. This is this angle. Now, what is theta? Theta should be 180 plus alpha. Do you see that? Theta is alpha plus 180, right? So the principal angle theta is 180 degrees plus 27 degrees for us, right? We'll write approximate. We rounded it to the whole number, right? So add this, right? So we get 7 and 2 plus 10 to 207 degrees. So that is accurate to the whole number. So that is your principal angle which you got and 207 is in quadrant 3. I hope you understand all the steps which we have taken to solve this kind of a problem. So those of you who are doing it in radians, so they, for them, at this stage, they can change the calculator settings to radians, find the answer in radians, and then write theta as pi plus the angle alpha. Do you understand? So they can write down their answer in radians. Okay. I hope you understand and appreciate it. So I'll adopt slightly different approach in question three, which is similar kind. And I hope by the end of that, you will understand how to solve any problem where coordinates of a point on terminal R are given to you.